the Shark Deck. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Overshadowed by all of yesterday's news, it was revealed that Harry and Meghan have officially received their invitation to the coronation, but it remains unclear if they will attend. A spokesperson for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex told the Sunday Times in a statement this weekend, I can confirm the Duke has recently received email correspondence from His Majesty's office regarding the coronation. An immediate decision on whether the Duke and Duchess will attend will not be disclosed by us at this time. A royal source told People, It is such a momentous occasion for Charles, and he would want his son to be at the coronation to witness it. He would like to have Harry back in the family. If they don't sort it out, it will always be part of the king's reign, and how he has left his family disjointed. He has had a reputation as a distant parent, and it would be awful for him for that to continue. Royal historian Robert Lacey pointed out there have been some very grave disagreements between them, but the Platinum Jubilee and the funerals of the Queen and Prince Philip did demonstrate that they could put personal enmity aside for the sake of the bigger cause, and that is what the coronation will all be about. Piers Morgan did not react well to the non-disclosure. Piers tweeted, The arrogance of this statement is comical. These monarchy-trashing clowns shouldn't be anywhere near the coronation, let alone anyone taking their time to make a decision. One follower added, Clearly waiting to hear from the Netflix producers if they can get a camera crew in time. Prince William himself sounds like he's in full peers mode. A royal source told the Daily Beast, William won't shed a tear if Harry doesn't make it. It feels utterly betrayed by Harry. Relations have never been this bad, and he hates him for what he has done to the family in the books and interviews. He will support whatever decision his dad makes, but it's no secret he would prefer it if he wasn't there or indeed never stepped foot in England again. Rebel Wilson may join Piers and William in not being a fan. She told Andy Cohen about the first time she made Mrs. Spare. She told Andy Cohen about the first time she met Mrs. Spare. Megan was not as cool. She wasn't as naturally warm. However, Harry could not have been nicer. Palace and Drake will be right back. Hey, hey, it's Jordan Ross Myers, the man behind Twitter's notorious Lee Radswell and Don Gunvalson. I'm inviting you to join me every week for the Pretty Corrupt podcast. Along with my co-host, reality casting director Stacey Noel Connor, and disgraced entertainment TV producer Nate Safer, we deconstruct pop culture's past, present, and future and probe the dark crevices of Hollywood taking you inside the scandals, feuds, rises, and falls of society's rich and infamous. Alongside interviews with our celebrity friends and special guest hosts, everything is fair game on the Pretty Corrupt podcast. Every Tuesday on all streaming platforms and at storicmedia.com. The Daily Beast's royalists report the decision by King Charles to evict Harry and Meghan from Frogmore Cottage and to move Prince Andrew in was taken in partnership with Prince William. Their source, a friend of the most senior royal, said, Charles is not making these decisions in isolation. He has the support of his son and heir and is working in partnership with him. They are a unit and are closer than ever. Royal expert Hilary Fordwich says, Harry and Meghan may be out of touch with reality. If they decide to ask for a reimbursement for the renovations at Frogmore, she told Fox Digital. Even Aesop knew back in 260 BC, be careful what you wish for. H&M declared wanting to live a more normal life. Well, there are consequences. The speculation that they expect to be reimbursed for either renovations or their rent is the sentiment of someone who has no clue what the consequences of their actions are because they are so incredibly out of touch with reality. Where in life aren't there consequences for actions? Perhaps Harry can deduct what he's expecting back from what he was given by his mother and his grandmother, as well as his father, and return all that. Kinsey Schofield, host of the To Die For Daily podcast, added, It might take a bit more of the sting away if Harry and Meghan were given back any of the money that they invested in Frogmore Cottage. I don't disagree with the idea that they should receive reimbursement. In fact, if they truly wanted a vacation home in the UK, that money could help them secure another spot. Might be a win-win. She noted the original gifting of the cottage came with the expectation that they would be living a life of service and representing the monarchy. They seem to be doing the opposite of that, and the home has become a glorified Airbnb. 
Royal expert Shannon Felton Spence chimed in, Frogmore Cottage's crown property. Harry and Meghan handpicked from the available property options and were granted a lease for its use as a wedding gift in line with what is offered to other members of the family, she said. The King's decision to evict them and downsize Andrew's living arrangement is making use of property that is recently renovated, secure, and would otherwise sit empty. This is all in line with what we have already seen from his financial approach. Andrew is lucky to just have his home downsized not taken away. Schofield has heard Andrew isn't excited about Frogmore anyway. I'm still hearing that Andrew is fighting the move. I highly doubt he would make any dramatic changes to the estate. This is the type of thing that would likely make him look harder at life in the States, which we have heard he is considering for weeks. As one of my Twitter followers said, it's like America has a kick me sign on the back. We're getting all the royal rejects. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceindrink at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, even YouTube Music Now. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDonough. This is Palace and Dragon. Good times. I'm Melissa McKay, star of the new podcast, The Royals of Malibu. I play Ella, a sex worker just trying to survive when I get swept away to the wealth and the drama of Malibu. You know, you can like something without touching it. You've made the biggest mistake of your life, Ella Sinclair. You are a total psycho! Will Ella find a happily ever after ending? Or will these rich kids destroy her? Fall in love with the Royals of Malibu on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you listen to podcasts.